Hi, thanks for checking out Next Level Carpentry. In this video, I'm talking about checking an item off my to-do list, and everyone has a to-do list, right? And, as you might imagine, my list tends to run to an extreme for a number of reasons, not the least of which is I'm a pretty picky guy. It took a lot of searching to come up with a suitable replacement for those blinds, referring back to the fact that I'm a picky guy, but after spending a fair amount of time searching online, I came across Zabitat.com and this set of color enclosed blinds that are made by ODL. I'll tell you more about their features and the reasons I chose these in a voiceover while I'm doing the installation. Later in the video, I'll show you the unboxing of the blinds where I take the frame off and paint it uh, with some dialogue with that. But um, I've got to get these installed this morning. There's a winter storm coming in. You can see this weather report screen here. And I don't want to have to wait another week to install these while I'm waiting for snow to melt. So I'm going to jump right in, swap these out, tell you more about the features with voiceover as I'm doing the actual installation. So here's the existing shades that are on my to-do list to upgrade. These shades are the ones that were installed when the home was built. And while they provide privacy uh, with this slider, they don't have a feature to block the light completely. And in this room with uh, uh, wood shades here, we can control the light. And we want to be able to control the light in this door along with privacy. So blinds are the answer but blinds uh, on a door swing in the wind and it's a lot of dusting for a bunch of little shades so the enclosed blinds give us all the features that we're looking for and one of the main reasons that i ended up choosing zabitat for the blinds that they sell they're manufactured by odl and purchased through zabitat.com is because they offer the color enclosed blinds uh, there again they're enclosed so there's no dusting there's no strings to control the function and primarily the color. Generally they're available in uh, like white and chocolate brown, uh, two colors that don't work for this room or for this house. So I was really pleased that Zabitat offers a slate gray color which blends with the house. This door needs to be repainted on the outside. Uh, there's UV damage to the original paint. The inside of the door was never painted. We're going to go with the mocha color. Espresso goes with the trim work in the house. But with this winter storm coming I'm not able to get the door painted and then put the new blinds in the newly repainted door. So I'm just going to swap them out here so you can see the process. Luckily for me in this installation, the new frame for the color enclosed blinds is identical in size to this. So the frame is the same as is the cutout. And that just points out that the blinds are available in standard sizes. The blinds can also be installed in a blank door, obviously, or one with a different size window in it just by recutting the opening to fit the one required by the color enclosed blinds. This frame is installed essentially the same as the new one uh, with screws on this interior trim that sandwich the two pieces of trim together and hold it in the door. You can see on the outside of the door the UV damage, uh, some hail spots on there, and then the trim here used to be white and it was painted this uh, mocha brown and it's failing uh, from UV and age primarily. And that makes me thankful that the color enclosed blinds are available in the primed finish ready for paint rather than just white to be painted over because the paint will grab better on that plastic than this plastic and last longer. Basically swapping out the shades for the blinds is just a matter of unscrewing it and taking it out. I already used an ice pick to remove all the little plugs that were in this frame originally, so I'm able to get right at the screw heads. And the light kit on the outside of this, I think, is stuck in pretty well, so I'm have, probably going to have to force it out of there. But just in case, I've left that screw for last. Anybody else notice that I forgot to take that screw out? I'm sorry the light's terrible in here because the camera's fighting the outside light and the inside light. 
But you can see what the cutout opening looks like. This is a fiberglass door that's got foam inside. They just chop these out with a router to the right size according to the unit that's going to go in. And again, thankfully, this is a standard size unit that's in here and I'm able to replace it with a new standard size unit without a lot of fuss. With all the screws out and some caulk on the outside, it's a matter of using a putty knife around the outside of this. It's obvious I didn't have to worry about this old light kit falling out on the sidewalk. This will probably go down as the hardest part of this installation. There it is. You can see how tough that was to pull out because this has a bead of special sealant in here put on with a caulk gun or something and really stuck unnecessarily tight to the door. And since there's nothing inherently wrong with these shades, they still function, uh, I'll be donating these to the local Habitat for Humanity Restore where they can serve another life. I'm just using a sharpened putty knife to scrape off a little residual glue around this opening. After the storm blows through, I'll take the door into the shop, sand it, and smooth out this transition edge, repaint the door, stick it back in for 100% installation. But for times when the paint on the door is fine, this is all that's needed for the installation. And I want to make sure this is nice and clean so the new gasket doesn't stick to the old glue and get destroyed. The final step for preparation, I'm just going to use a little lacquer thinner, paper towel, to clean up the margin where the new frame is going to sit to make sure there's not any residual glue on here that would stick to that nice gasket on the new blinds. And when I repaint the door, I'll fix the imperfections in the face of this fiberglass to ensure a good seal between the blinds and the door. You can see I added a few pieces of blue painter's tape to hold the frame to the glass because I just pulled that apart last night to paint it and that seal isn't restuck to the glass like it will be once it's screwed together here. And Zabitat and the instructions recommend having a helper on hand for this stage but I'm going to go it alone. So it's a little dicey until that first screw is installed to pinch these together. But after that, it's a piece of cake. Back inside, I just worked my way around the frame from this side over and from the top to the middle to insert each screw on the way around. And granted, this would be a little simpler if I had a helper or if I laid it out on a sawhorse, but you can see from me doing it here, this is possible. And just because the going gets a little tough doesn't mean it's not doable. I'm installing the screws one by one to keep everything lined up, and I'll go around and tighten them all uniformly when I'm done. And the best way to set the torque evenly on all the screws, I'm just using a, a drill. I've got this Makita drill set at eight, which is a happy medium between a secure and snug fit and stripping screws out. And now that all the screws are uh, driven and torqued, I can remove the tape from the outside. And that painter's tape allows me to do that without pulling this paint off the frame, even though I just sprayed that last night. I knocked that thing with my head. So with the blue tape removed, all the screws torqued on the inside, uh, the blinds installation is complete for all intents and purposes in this door. One last detail for installation is to remove this piece of tape by pulling it straight up. And that little red button is just stuck there to protect the blinds during shipment and it keeps the control slider from moving up and down. Because the blinds are shipped in the fully up position so they don't rattle around in between the glass in case they get drugged by an ox cart during delivery. The slider slides along this little rail that's attached to the glass in a very compact little control. The blinds are raised and lowered 
with that slider starting at waist height but they lower all the way down to the bottom with a simple push of that slider it's a very smooth operation all the way through and the last inch of travel on that slider is what controls the tilt of the blinds and I like the sleek classic look of these blinds both inside and out because they go with the decor of the rest of the house once weather permits I, and I get the door painted I'll shoot before and after pictures and upload those to Pinterest so you can see the transformation between the, the old shades and the new blinds <laughs> I'm not sure where this segment is going to fit into the video, but I've got to do the unboxing and spray the trim on the color enclosed blinds tonight. You can see it's dark out. Uh, there's a winter storm coming this week. I've got to get this and a whole bunch of other stuff done before the end of the week. So I'm just going to do the unboxing now and show a little bit uh, about the finishing process for this. As you can see, the color enclosed blinds come in a nice sturdy box. And uh, I opened this up when it came to make sure there was no damage, which is saying a lot. This is South Dakota, and FedEx brings stuff uh, with an ox cart here. And once in a while, if the cart's full, they just strap it on behind and drag it. So uh, this is pretty remarkable that this came through this well compared to some deliveries I get. And there's the little Zabitat logo on the box. I really like how this is shrink wrapped, keeps everything nice and clean. And because the uh, shrink wraps in good shape, I know that everything inside is in good shape. So I'll go ahead and get this opened up. And you can see here the little plugs. These are the plugs for the screw holes in the trim, which I'll have to uh, paint to color coordinate. And then a packet of screws for uh, holding the inside and the outside frame together. You can get uh, a look here at the color we chose. This is the slate gray. It's the best color we could find to coordinate to this uh, Rolex metal mocha brown trim paint that we have on the door. Again, it's a color that coordinates well. And with that and the quality of the unit are the main reasons we chose color and closed blinds for this honeydew list. I'm just going to remove the few screws that are in here for shipping and that way I can separate the inside trim from the glass and the outside trim. There's six screws in there, not four. That way I can lift out the glass and blinds unit from here and stand it on a couple of the styrofoam blocks from shipping in an unused corner of the shop while I'm spraying the trim. And here's a feature I wasn't aware of. Uh, there's a, a bead of some kind of foam here. It's a little bit sticky, but you can see the glass lifted right off of there. So it's not siliconed on, so I can take this off and paint it. Uh, this bead seals the frame to the glass on the outside, and this bead seals the frame to the door on the outside. And that weather stripping foam isn't necessary on the inside face of the glass or the door. And I really like that weather stripping feature, especially for this project, because other uh, light kits I've seen and worked with, um, and the ones I took out of the door, they've got some type of caulk in there. Once you put the frame in there, yeah, it's sealed to the door, but then it's going to mess up the paint and mess up the sealant. In this case, I'll be able to uh, install this in the existing door over the old paint, have everything all sealed up. Once this storm blows over, I can just pop the light kit back out, bring the door in the shop, sand it, put the finished coat of paint on, and then get an excellent weather seal when I reinstall it. So that's really a great feature. And the fact that the frame seals to the glass without a big gooey glob of silicone around here is an added bonus that I'm pretty impressed with. So I like that removing this frame is so simple I don't have to mask everything off. I can get an excellent paint job all the way to the very edges uh, with no overlap. That's a great thing. Uh, so I'm going to get set up and paint this. As you can see in the instructions, this frame can either be stained or painted. For this project, I'm painting it. I'll be using Diamond Vogel's Nucling uh, Exterior Latex Paint. According to my favorite painter, uh, it has really good color retention for darker colors like the Rolex Metal Mocha Brown that I'm using on this project. Uh, the instructions do say that using a dark color can cause 
uh, heat warping and stuff, which isn't covered by the warranty, but uh, that's a risk I'm taking because the other frame that's on there, which is inferior quality to this, hasn't had any heat warping issues. I'm going to be applying the paint with this Graco Ultra handheld cordless sprayer that I recently got, uh, specifically for refinishing these doors. That's turning out to be a great gun. I probably should have talked to Graco and uh, see if they'd sponsor the video, but I didn't get that done. So I'm going to get the shop into spray paint mode, squirt this with a couple coats of that paint, and then you'll see me installing it in the door. Or you might have already seen me do that in the video. I'm not sure how I'm going to link this together for the final production, but um, I got to get to work, get this shot, and call it a day. Well, this setup's about as low tech as you can get. I just have uh, a footstool and a Tupperware tote underneath the tarp using the Zabitat box. I'm just going to set these frames on here, spray them one at a time, set them off to the side to dry. Done deal. Most of the time these light kits get installed and then painted in place, but because I'm painting it first and installing it second, I've got to paint all these little plugs the same color as the frame. And here's a quick tip for doing that. It involves taking a almost world famous Lintz Brothers pizza box and a roll of Nashua 360 duct tape, the only stuff worth using. Just stick the tape down like this, stretch it across, and put the sticky side out like that. And the plugs can each be placed on there and not blow around while they're being painted. These little plugs are kind of made at an angle, so I'm having the angled face face pretty much the same direction. These little buggers are slippery. Should have put them a little closer together or used more tape. There's always room for one more. Alcohol is the only cleaner needed or recommended for cleaning uh, these pieces of trim. Anything hotter than alcohol will damage uh, the gasketing that seals the frame to the door and the glass. So I just give it a quick spritz of alcohol and wipe it off. This video is starting to look more and more like an infomercial the farther I get. But uh, normally I don't wear a shop apron, but I don't want to mess up my next level carpentry t-shirt. So I got this nice Hudson one. Bought this a while back. And I like it because it's got the back straps. It's nice and sturdy and just clips in the back. I don't want a bow tie on the front when I'm working. so. There's another plug for another product. It'll be in the video link below. And obviously this little frame doesn't take near this much paint, but it's easier to spray with a full cup than an empty one. I'm using an FFLP310 tip in this Graco sprayer, which works nicely for this small trim, even though it's a little bit overkill. And now I just have to add extra toppings to the plugs. I've got many hundreds of hours uh, behind a spray gun in my life, but I don't have really much experience at all with that uh, particular airless cordless sprayer, because I just got it. Um, nor the Nucling paint being sprayed, but talking to my painter and the Graco guys, I'm managing to get really good results with it and with not too much experience. But the one thing that's really important with Nucling particular is to spray a tack coat on. Uh, you can still see plastic through this uh, coat. And then I um, put the shop fan on it for half an hour to get that tack coat uh, to stick, just a little sticky. Then I can lay on a nice full, even wet coat to finish this off. And here's a close-up of my shop fan. This mounting system I have for it means that I can direct it anywhere in the shop and it's got a three-speed motor so I can really dial it in and cure paint in a hurry. Second coat, same as the first. And if I've got one thing to say about spraying latex paint with an airless sprayer, you really gotta move. And I'm gonna blow dry this coat for an hour or so, 45 minutes, until it flashes off. Give it another quick coat and call it good before I proceed to the final installation. Well, it's been a pretty long day, so I'm sure glad Chip came by to spray the last coat on these frame parts. 
I'm getting kind of tired and I'm not sure how good a job I do, so this is awesome. Sweet, buddy. Thanks. And I think I'll call that good. Let this stuff dry overnight and put it in the door tomorrow. After letting the paint on this frame dry overnight, I'm able to reassemble the blinds so that I can take them down to the door for installation. There's small guide pins that help line up the outside frame with the inside frame. Then I'll redrive those six screws to hold this together temporarily while I take it down to the door for installation. Since I need to take this light kit back out of the door to paint the door, I'm not going to be installing the painted plugs at this time. Well, this is a bit of an awkward segue to wrap up a video with. But it should be obvious that I wasn't kidding when I talked about a winter storm blowing in, right? See what I mean? And thankfully, it's warmer than the 20 degrees it was. And the five inches of snow that fell and blew in is pretty well melted away. And I want to thank Zabitat for the color and closed blind unit that was used in this video. And the link below takes you to a landing page where you can get a free quote for blinds like this just by filling out a form like I did. And while you're there, do me a favor and mention that you saw their blinds on Next Level Carpentry. I don't get a kickback, but I'd appreciate it. And I'll also include that same link to the free quote form in the video description below in case for some reason the one in the video doesn't work. It's important to me to let viewers know that I did a search online for enclosed blinds. And after searching, found that Zabitat had the best solution for me to remove this item from my honey-do list. Then once I found the blinds, I decided to shoot a video to show the process of getting those old stark white shades changed out to these color-coordinated blinds. And it's important to me because that's quite different than a supplier contacting me to access the Next Level Carpentry audience and then paying me to push their products on you. And I really hope the viewers appreciate the difference because mutual respect and reputation are very high priority for me here at Next Level Carpentry. And I don't want to compromise that trust over a video. This elevation of our home has high public exposure, so classy looking blinds that provide privacy are important. And the fact that they're simple to install and come with a 10-year warranty is a real plus. Well, I know that this is an unusual video on topic from Next Level Carpentry with information beyond the choice of enclosed blinds featured in it. So I hope you'll consider subscribing to Next Level Carpentry if you haven't already. And please, while you're at it, poke that thumbs up button if you're so inclined. The video description below has links to Zabitat, Patreon, Amazon, and Teespring where clicking links leads you to all those ways to show support for Next Level Carpentry, where videos are available to you free for the watching here on YouTube, which I really appreciate. I'm going to head back inside the shop to clean up and to warm up. So until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>